second time, WTHR's Bob Kravitz recently joined Adam Sean on a podcast and said that barring the Super Bowl, he expects Pagano to be gone. And added Indy could set their sights on Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Here's the quote. Look, if they could give Nick Saban full power, and I fully believe that they are willing to do that, I see no reason why Nick Saban wouldn't. Because when you more or less fail at a job, you want so badly to get back in the game. So I think if they could offer him full power, and I think that they would be willing to do that, I could see him coming back in a heartbeat. Saban, of course, coaching the Dolphins in 2005 and 2006, and went only 15 and 17. Stephen A., do you like the idea of the Colts going after your guy, Nick? I love it. Um, I think Nick Saban is worthy of of it. I don't blame Ursay for, for, for envisioning or fantasizing about that. And I, I'm not saying that I think Nick Saban should go. Mm -hmm. um, if he's happy at Alabama, loves teaching young men, being in the national championship picture every year, roll tide every Saturday afternoon, it's 100,000 people at your games, and he's cool with that, and, and he wants lifetime security, mm -hmm. then stay at Alabama because they certainly ain't going to fire him. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. If he has an itch to scratch because of his tenure with the Miami Dolphins, however, mm -hmm. and he has something to prove on the NFL level, then I would say go for it. Um, but that's his call. I would tell you this. I love it because I think he's worthy of it. I think his reputation, his record, his accomplishments are deserving of it. Um, and I think when you look at the level uh, of the lack of discipline that seems to have plagued the Colts franchise, even in the midst of them having three consecutive 11 and five seasons, I think that this is the kind of guy you need. When you're going 11 and five, but primarily beating up on a weak AFC South, but you struggle outside the division and all of this other stuff, that's gonna drive Nick Saban crazy. When you turn over the ball too much, that's gonna drive Nick Saban crazy. When you can't run the football effectively and continuously, that's gonna drive Nick Saban crazy. When you can't defend, that's gonna drive Nick Saban crazy. So he's gonna pay attention to all of that and clean that up. The only reason that I don't love it to the A level is because of one name and one name only. Jim Harbaugh. If you could tell, and I'm not saying we know he, I, I doubt you can get him from Michigan, mm -hmm. but if you could get that man from Michigan to come and coach Andrew Luck again, like he did at Stanford, to me, that's a better choice than Nick Saban. Be, but only because he coached mm -hmm. Luck at Stanford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the edge that he has. I think both are similar and would do similar jobs in the NFL, but I give Harbaugh a slight edge because of his experience successfully already in yep. San Francisco, combined with the fact that he already coached and has a relationship with Andrew Luck from their days at Stanford. Okay. That is the only name I will put above Nick right. Saban. I'm going to have to go fast because we're almost out of time. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, my bad. So, I, I get you on Harbaugh. I hear you. I, I'm not sure Nick Saban is a professional football coach of, of, the, of the NFL level. Okay. I think his my way or the highway s style works with kids better than with hardened professionals who make a whole lot of money, maybe a lot more money than he's making in some cases. And I'm going to say this again. I believe the owner of the in Indianapolis Colts is pointing fingers in all the wrong directions because Again, you're giving Andrew Luck a pass. Are you sure he isn't the problem more than your GM and your coach and anything else you want to point to? Andrew Luck, despite his consistent inconsistency, still gets a pass. Despite his league-leading turnovers, gets a pass. Despite a QBR that has declined every year, all four years in a row, he gets a pass. Could Jim Harbaugh fix that? Sure. Is that realistic after the success that he's having early on at Michigan, his alma mater, where I think he could win a national championship in the next two or three years? Nope. It's not It's not realistic for him to go to Bayless, are you on you? Are you getting rid of Angela? Nope. You're going to keep him, right? Yep. You're, well, you're then, it doesn't matter. then it doesn't matter what yep. he's doing. You have to fix it. So the I, I would go get a the quarterback best. coach. Nick Saban's a defensive football coach who has no feel for it. Why do you bring in Lane Kiffin? Well, then you agree with Harbaugh, right? right? Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll go with Harbaugh because okay. Harbaugh is like a, a quarterback whisperer. You know, he can get in the kid's ear and, and sort of make him feel like he's better than he has been. He could clean up Andrew Luck the best he can clean him up. And Again. So let's put it together. 
I think the difference between you and I is you're pointing at Andrew Luck and you're looking for somebody to clean up Andrew Luck. I look at the Indianapolis Colts and think about them having a myriad of problems around Andrew Luck. Not to say that he's not a problem, because he is, mm -hmm. but a myriad of problems around him that need to be fixed. I think Jim Harbaugh is the best guy for Andrew Luck. I think Nick Saban is just as good of a choice mm -hmm. as Harbaugh with everything around Luck. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Got it. Perfect. All right. Speaking of pointing fingers, Johnny Manziel is pointing them at himself. He explains one of his shortcomings that is holding him back. We'll get into that after the break. In comments made on Wednesday, Johnny Manziel conceded that being 5'11 affects his play as an NFL quarterback. Here's the quote for you. I'm not going to be able to sit there like some of these taller quarterbacks in the league and just be able to see everything happen as the play is on. I think I'm getting better at it, but I'm nowhere near perfect, that's for sure. Michael Johnson is 6'7". Carlos Dunlap is 6'8". I'm like 5'11 and a half, I guess. Well, both coach Mike Pettin and offensive coordinator John DeFilippo said his height should not matter, Pettin adding this. There are other quarterbacks of his stature that have been successful. When you study a Drew Brees, you can see that he's not a scrambler, but he has a great sense in the pocket as far as where to move in relation to who he's throwing to and where the potential throwing lane would be. Russell Wilson is similar in that aspect as well. Skip, do you have a problem with Manziel's excuse here? Do I? I open this show by expressing my disappointment in Des Bryant. I'm here to tell you I am far, far more disappointed in a Johnny Manziel to the point that I've just about heard and seen enough of my man, Johnny Manziel. You know, it's bad enough that the other day he admitted to the cops that he's been drinking alcohol after two months of rehab. But, but this even cuts on a football level even deeper. Now he's making an excuse for his height after we all remember that he campaigned before his draft, that he was going to show the NFL that height did not matter. He tore up college football at this height. He said, I will measure six feet tall at the combine, and he measured five feet 11 and three quarters inches. And now he's saying, I'm 5'11 and a half, I guess. You, you guess? You're a quarter of an inch shorter than a Drew Brees who did win a Super Bowl. You're actually three quarters of an inch taller than a Russell Wilson who probably should have won two straight Super Bowls. Manziel has now started to give up on Johnny Manziel. And the one thing I never thought he would lose was his confidence. And it's, it seems like it's shot. Skip Bayless, I think you're being entirely too hard on Johnny Manziel here. Once again, he's a quarterback. He's a guy you thought had a lot of potential. You thought he should have been the first overall pick by Houston. Uh, he's disappointed you in a myriad of ways. I understand that, but I think you're being entirely too hard on him. And here's why. Johnny Manziel may have not used the right words, but what he was saying, in my opinion, the way I interpreted it, is that that's not the kind of quarterback that I am. I'm a quarterback that scrambles out of the pocket, that makes plays, okay? Not just standing in there trying to look over defenders and anticipate with timing routes, et cetera, where to throw the football and to whom. Last time I checked, when Skip Bayless raved about this, those were the things that you alluded to. Mm -hmm. The fact that he wasn't somebody that was going to be the conventional QB standing in the pocket. You acknowledged that at some point he would have to be able to do that in order to be successful because every single snap can involve and entail you scrambling out of the pocket mm -hmm. and evading on rushes in order to make a play. Mm -hmm. That you were going to have to be able to stand there and take it. But nevertheless, his claim to fame is exactly what he alluded to. Now, the timing of it isn't good. The word usage of it is good because you have a self-defeatist attitude from the perspective of literally stigmatizing yourself as a guy who needs to run in order to be successful. Like as if you're not capable of standing in the pocket. Yeah. But in fact, he's heard it so much and he's looked at what he has had to deal with that he's simply saying to himself, to be the best that I can be, to be the Johnny football that you all know, this is what I feel I need to do in order to facilitate success. Okay. That's how I took it. And all I'm saying to you is, you were the guy. 
that talked about mm -hmm. all of his, all of those skills of elusivity and beyond that he brought to the table. You didn't say that he would have to do that and not pocket pass. Okay, remember. But you brought on all of that I, stuff, I too. I telling you before the draft, what I love most about Johnny in his last year at Texas A&M, he led the nation in completion percentage from the pocket. He threw darts at Texas A&M from the pocket. And I thought he could become a Russell Wilson who can shift in the pocket with his quickness to create the lane that he needs to see between right. the 6'7 and the 6'8 guy, but stay within the confines of the offense on time in any kind of West Coast system and get rid of the football and hit the open guy. Yeah, but that can still do that. But that still involves that still involves him looking at a gap in a pocket to throw the football as opposed to looking over defenders or that he can't look over to. I don't want to hear an excuse. His teammates don't want to hear this. Well, excuse. I agree with you. Yeah. You don't want to hear it, but I'm just saying he's saying the kind of things that you and others have said. Mm. All right. Brown Steelers Sunday at 1. We have a great one. The Week 10 matchup looking forward to in the NFC. Bruce Arians versus Pete Carroll. Carson Palmer versus Russell Wilson. The guys will pick it. Who wins? That's next.